For thousands of years, the Austronesians were known to many people around the world as the undisputed masters of the seas, known to the Japanese and Chinese for quite some time as great seafarers and recognized for their skill in navigating the seas by the Europeans. The Austronesians even taught an entire nation how to sail, perhaps all too well, as we'll discuss later on. There are even some more isolated Austronesian tribes who spend nearly their entire lives on the open ocean. So it's only fitting that the Austronesians originated on a modest island, only to conquer the world's biggest archipelago and beyond, with no other group having such a dominance of the local waters with the same level of technology. However, the Austronesians are not simply one united group, although in the near past various anthropologists believe the Austronesians to have a common origin dubbed as the Malay race, named so for the belief that they originated in peninsular Malaysia and spread out to the Philippines, Indonesia, the Pacific, and elsewhere. However, we now know the intricacies and complexities of the genetic composition of what is now known as the Austronesian people. It's now accepted in the vast majority of fields that the Austronesian proto-language and people groups originated from the island of Taiwan, formerly known as Formosa, which is why the Taiwanese Aborigines, which simply means indigenous and has nothing to do with the Australian Aborigines, were known as Formosans to the Europeans before being conquered by the Chinese and incorporated into the mainland after generations of settlement. So ironically, only a small minority of the Austronesian Urahaiman or homeland is of Austronesian ancestry today. They spread out like a tsunami over the Philippines, Malaysia, Indonesia, the South Pacific Islands, and even as far as Madagascar off the African coast. Therefore, there is extreme phenotypic and genetic diversity between groups that could be labeled Austronesian, and it is accordingly not a very good ethnic identifier, as unlike Slavic or Germanic or Celtic peoples, there are massive differences between various groups and regions. Just like the Turks, the Austronesians are a macro-ethno-linguistic group spanning many countries that is the result of the fusion of multiple gene pools or racial groups, and we can actually measure the different levels of admixture among different population groupings, with nearly all being a fusion of Eastern Eurasian DNA and the Australo-Melanesian or Australoid component native to Southeast Asia and the Pacific, with the exception of Madagascar, which has a large Sub-Saharan African component due to their proximity to Africa. Due to more recent migration dating back to the colonial era, there is a small to moderate European component dispersed throughout the populations of the Philippines, Indonesia, Madagascar, and the Pacific Islanders, especially the Maori of New Zealand, as well as a Middle Eastern and South Asian component in some of these countries as well due to trade dating back thousands of years. The Formosan or Taiwanese Aborigine cluster clearly has the least amount of admixture, showing that they are the origin for the whole of the Austronesian people, although as mentioned they make up less than 3% of Taiwan's population in the present day, being confined almost entirely to the mountainous interior. However, a very large proportion, a fourth by some estimates, of the non-immigrant Han Chinese population of Taiwan has some Formosan ancestry. Physical appearance would obviously not be a good indicator of Austronesian heritage, as some Malagasy subgroups are far more African than Southeast Asian, and some Austronesian-speaking Melanesians likewise have very little Austronesian ancestry as well. However, the group that was previously thought of as the core of the Malay race, the inhabitants of the Philippines, Borneo, Sumatra, Java, Sulawesi, Peninsular Malaysia, and a few other smaller islands, are the largest Austronesian subgroup by far, which is why they were thought of as the original Austronesians. So although the Filipinos, Malaysians, and Western Indonesians clearly cluster together from a genetic standpoint, more so than the others, this doesn't mean they're genetically identical, as the base of the Peninsular Malay or Proto-Malay population was originally of Austroasiatic origin, meaning related to the Cambodians, Vietnamese, and others further north, before being assimilated by the incoming Austronesian population, which is why the Orang Asli, Australoid inhabitants of Malaysia's interior, speak Austroasiatic languages to this day. The pre-Austronesian peoples of the Philippines and Indonesia likely belong to a multitude of unknown ethno-linguistic groups, evident by the extreme diversity in genetics, vocabulary, and culture even today between neighboring Austronesian groups.
One interesting peninsular Austronesian group would be the Chamic peoples, who are actually located in Cambodia and southern Vietnam, and have been heavily influenced by these surrounding groups after the Kingdom of Champa was conquered by the Vietnamese and Khmer. The other Austronesian-speaking peoples that have a huge amount of non-Eastern Eurasian admixture include the Moluccans of Eastern Indonesia and East Timor, who have a large amount of pop and blood, as well as Micronesians, such as those in Guam and the Marshall Islands, Polynesians, such as those native to Hawaii, New Zealand, or Samoa, and lastly the Melanesians, who are basically Austronesian-speaking Papuans with around 20-25% to Eastern Eurasian admixture, who spread out over the Melanesian islands such as Vanuatu, Fiji, and New Caledonia only after they had learned the seafaring methods of the Polynesians. So as to who exactly is an Austronesian is up for debate, but there have without a doubt been many calls for unity between the Austronesians of Southeast Asia, and this has been one of the more frequently requested national irredentist scenarios on my channel. Jose Rizal, one of the Philippines' founding fathers, is perhaps the best known advocate of the unification of the Malay archipelago, also known as Malaysia, mainly as a pushback against the European and American rule over these territories. Despite being split between Catholicism, Islam, and even Hinduism, as well as being ruled over by different colonial powers such as the British, Dutch, Portuguese, and Spanish, many politicians believed it was destined to have these Austronesian peoples unite under a single country, although they didn't really dream of uniting the whole of the Austronesian world, stretching from Rapa Nui to Madagascar. So what would it look like if we took it to the extreme and saw the unification of the entire Austronesian realm? By looking at a map of where Austronesian speakers inhabit today, we shall obviously be including the Philippines, Malaysia, Brunei, most of Indonesia, as well as Madagascar, and most of the Pacific Islands, but we'll also be including areas formerly inhabited by Austronesian groups, or areas that were at one point considered to be in the Austronesian homeland because of the extreme complexity of Austronesian settlement today and heritage. More on that later. So we'll also be including Singapore, Taiwan, New Zealand, Hawaii, Champa on the mainland, and most interestingly, the Aleutian Archipelago in Alaska, which is predominantly of Filipino and Polynesian ancestry from more recent migrants. This gives us a population of 483 million people, one and a half times larger than the United States, and a land area of 1.2 million square miles, that's about 3.1 million square kilometers, or about the same size as India, clearly with a much lower population density. Although Java and Luzon in Indonesia and the Philippines respectively are both some of the most densely populated islands on the planet, with a combined population totaling 42% of the entire pan-Austronesian country. This is an economy of around 7.4 trillion US dollars, around 16,000 per capita, around the same as Brazil or China, raised significantly by the inclusion of Singapore and Brunei, two of the richest countries on Earth, although some areas of Madagascar or Melanesia are some of the poorest. Due to a high degree of bilingualism, it's quite difficult to assess the linguistic makeup of such a country. Although the Filipino and Malayo-Indonesian languages would be spoken by the vast majority of the population, with English being the largest spoken non-native language in Austronesian territory, as well as Chinese due not only to the inclusion of Taiwan, but also a very large and very old overseas Chinese community in Singapore, Malaysia, and Indonesia. Again, classifying by race for Austronesians, just like with the Turkic peoples, is extremely difficult because of the high degree of intermixing with other groups, but roughly 87% of the country would ethnically belong to an Austronesian-speaking group, with the largest cluster, that being the Southeast Asian or Malaysian group, including the Visayans, Javanese, Malays, Sundanese, Balinese, or other smaller groups, making up 79%, while the Afro-Asian Malagasy would be roughly 5%, and the highly mixed Pacific Islander groups would be only 2.5%. The largest overall minority would be the Chinese at over 9%, although nearly 70 million, or roughly 14% of the traditional Austronesian homeland has some significant degree of Chinese heritage, with at least a moderate presence in literally every single region from Madagascar to Bali or even New Ireland. There's also a large South Asian diaspora in Singapore and Malaysia and other areas adding up to around 1%, 2.5%, 
with those of European or mixed European-Austronesian heritage making up 2%, mostly due to the inclusion of New Zealand and Hawaii, although an additional 28 million or 6% of the Austronesian homeland has some degree of European ancestry, with an unknown but significant proportion of Malaysia having European heritage, possibly even as high as 14% in the Philippines judging from genetic studies, but there's also a large degree of overlap with those of partial Chinese descent as well. Of course, virtually the entirety of Madagascar's population has some degree of African genes highly variable by region, nearly 25 million people, although there wasn't any backwards migration from Madagascar back to the Austronesian core region. Austronesia would be an incredibly religiously diverse country, being roughly half Muslim, nearly all Sunni, a third Christian split between Catholics and Protestants two to one, with the remainder belonging to smaller religious groups. The vast majority of the Malays, Javanese, Sumatrans, and some southern Philippine islands would be Islamic due to ancient trade ties with the Middle East, while most of the Philippines, as well as many smaller ethnic minorities such as the indigenous people of Sarawak, the Pacific Islanders, the Malagasy, a small sliver of Sumatra, Timor, and the surrounding islands would be Christian, mostly due to missionaries and ruled by the Europeans. As I discussed in an older video, the majority of Southeast Asia and the Austronesian peoples were formerly practitioners of Buddhism and later Hinduism, with very strong influence from the Indian subcontinent, although today the only native practitioners of Hinduism in the Austronesian realm are the Balinese, who are the most numerous, as well as some Cham tribes in Vietnam, and they are joined by Hindus from India and Singapore, Malaysia, Fiji, and elsewhere, adding up to around 2%. Other religious groups would include Buddhists and practitioners of traditional Chinese faiths such as Taoism or Confucianism, animists, the irreligious, mostly in New Zealand, Hawaii, and Taiwan, and a surprising number of adherents to the Baha'i faith scattered throughout the region. So to claim that there is a single Austronesian people from a genetic, cultural, or religious standpoint would definitely be a difficult case to make as there is extreme diversity in the Austronesian world and among different Austronesian people, but they all still share the same language, family, and heritage to a certain extent. So go ahead and let me know your thoughts on a hypothetical pan-Austronesian empire, the Austronesian peoples and lands, and for today's poll, let me know which Austronesian-speaking group you would like to learn more about. And as always, this has been Mason. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you next time.